Do you ever wonder why Werner has a bunch of war medals in his boss arena? Or why his cat Mech shows up in the Howling Nieces boss fight? Yeah, me too. So I did a little digging around. You see, when the game first came out, the lore, if you want to call it that, was pretty much non-existent. This is a cartoon game based on cartoons with cartoon logic, so it wasn't like there were things to connect together or too many crazy theories to be had. However, with the addition of the DLC, MDHR has seemingly tried to add in a bunch of little nuggets and tie-ins for us all to enjoy discovering together. For example, see my Astral Plane Theory video. Side note, since that video, I have made a massive document for part two of the Astral Plane, and I think I have pretty much got it figured out. Anyways, back to the Inkwell Isle War. Most Cuphead fans don't really consider the Netflix show canon, because it doesn't really fit with the story of the game. However, I think there is some evidence pointing to it being set before the game, so we can't really say either way. Maybe season two will shed further light. But for now, I just want to focus a little on Elder Kettle. In the show, we see him in what appears to be a historical British uniform, and he seems to have knowledge on some types of warfare. There isn't much evidence of this in-game. Really, the only thing I could find was how Elder Kettle has a sword as part of his uniform, and there's a sword on the wall in his house. But they aren't the same sword type, so it's weak at best. However, in the game, he does give us a potion that grants the pea shooter and probably the ability to parry as well. So he has access to some kind of warrior-like power. The running gun Rugged Ridge has a ton of evocative imagery, with the statues hinting at Miss Chalice's true form and some kind of ancient battle or something. But I actually don't think this is connected to Werner or the Howling Aces at all. You see, Cuphead is set in the 1930s, so while it's a magical cartoon, I still think some history applies. That business on Rugged Ridge? For another time. For now, let's head on over to the Marine Corps stage and take on Werner Vermin. On the base surface, this is a reference to the Tom and Jerry cartoons. Werner is a reference to Jerry, the Cat Mech is a reference to Tom, and the Tank is a reference to Campbell's Chicken Noodle Soup. How is this relevant? Well, it's the Astral Plane Soup. If you take a look at Werner's arena, you can start to see some odd stuff. Werner Werman is a very German name, and he is wearing a pickle hob helmet, which was used by many different military outfits throughout the late 1800s and early 1900s, but significant to the fight was used heavily by the German army in World War I, which happened in the 1910s. But then if you look at the top left, you can see as a Union Jack flag draping the wall, which of course is the flag of the United Kingdom. Furthermore, there are three medals on the walls. One is a medal recognizing Austrians that served in World War I, but the other ones are both tied to the British, one being a bronze British war medal, which means the holder was non-enlisted service personnel, and the other one I can't find much on. The Cuphead wiki says the colors probably relate to the Royal Navy, which is of course Britain's naval force. All of this kind of implies that Werner's a veteran of World War I in some way, but how? The UK flag and two of the medals kind of imply he served with the British Navy as a non-enlisted member, but the fact that he has a German name, wears a helmet commonly worn by German members, and is seemingly from Austria, implies he served the German army. One thing I thought is that the British stuff might just be war gadgets he likes to collect. He seems to be a tank engineer, and I don't think that you need tanks in the Navy. Well, at least not that kind. Maybe Werner is a veteran of World War I, but like the cartoon version of it. Looking at the bottle caps that show up in the fight, we can see references to the casino, which of course he may have visited in order to be in debt to the devil. This could also just be a rats like to collect things. Werner collected a ton of bottle caps. Honestly, this could be a very plausible explanation. Werner isn't a war veteran at all. Instead, he's just a rat who likes to collect war memorabilia and went into debt to the devil to gain the power to make mechs and stuff so he could feel like a real soldier. If we take a look at the Art of Cuphead book, which is made by MDHR, we can see them describe Werner as a military master in his own mind, which backs up this theory. One very interesting detail are the ghosts that come out of the Katzenwagen in the final phase. When they emerge from the cat, the mouth is covered in like a jail door. The ghosts are a pretty big detail, especially in regards to that other stuff going on, so look forward to more on them in the near future. If you are wondering where the ghosts come from, yeah, thinking about it, it's very messed up. Werner uses his own mechanized cat to eat other mice. Pretty twisted, MBHR. You gotta start thinking about the children. I think this could play into his whole mad engineer inventing crazy things and being, well, just crazy. One last thing to note is that with Werner's seemingly obsession over all things war, if he is an actual war veteran, I wouldn't be surprised if he is suffering from PTSD and that's why he has so many homemade traps and gadgets to always be ready for a battle. And that was about all we had on Werner up until the DLC came out. Just a character with a bunch of military references and a fun German themed fight. But then we got the Howling Aces tie-in. And there are really two of them. 
The first minor one being that the fighter pilot Bulldog is probably based off of Spike from Tom and Jerry, which the Werner fight is a reference to as well. But more importantly, the Bulldog pulls out Katzenwagen to fire yarn balls at you. Is this actually Katzenwagen or just another reference to Tomcat? I mean, they look almost identical. The Howling Aces are obviously military air force of some type, and the Bulldog is possibly referencing the British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, who was in command during World War I. They also make use of mechanized animals, and of course, both fights star an ultra-hot waifu character. <laughs> Side note, but I do hope we eventually get the real names of all these characters in the boss fight. Fingers crossed for a DLC arc book or something. Another thing to note is that the dog on dog fight level is represented by a hanger with the letters ACME, which can also be found in the Esther Winchester boss fight. ACME was used in many different Warner Brothers cartoons and is a fictional company that provides extremely dangerous and silly products. Considering that the fight has a mech cat that shoots yarn balls at you and a mech dog, Chinook, that shoots lasers, yeah, that fits. I wouldn't put too much weight on it though, seems to just be a fun reference. If I am being honest, while the animation and the overall concept in this fight are amazing, there isn't really much to speculate off of in the actual fight. The crossed bones seem to be the insignia of the Howling Aces, as it's both on the arms of the Bulldog Pilot as well as the tail end of the Chinook. It's also used as a weapon, which is pretty cool. This is a fairly obvious joke on how dogs like bones. Canty and Hughes shows up in the fight, part of the subversion of thinking this will be a plane battle, only to have Hughes standing on the wings while Hughes flies the plane. Maybe Hughes was a pilot on the opposite side of whoever the Aces served. He sure doesn't seem to like them, whoever they are. Seems to be a ton of room for theories in this fight, but not a lot of substantial evidence to back it up. If we reference the art of Cuphead for a second time, we'll learn that Katzenwagen is a direct invention of Werner. Looking closely at the cat in the Howling Aces boss fight, personally these are the exact same cats. But it's not like they just reused assets and animations, it's a whole new animation, so they could have just drawn any cat. Instead, they did this one. Pairing that with the military themes in both fights, and I do think there's a connection of some kind. My first thought is, well, if Werner is just a wannabe, maybe the Katsumwagen is like a standard issue thing and he made a copy that's quoted as being less than reliable. So I guess the main question is, what war do they actually serve in, and why does Inkle Isle need a military force? The only real war reference we get is in the 8th episode of the Cuphead show, where the devil is walking around surveying his different departments, and one of the henchmen references how three new wars are being waged, and they are breaking records and destruction. But this is obviously just a gag, with no real implications besides the fact that whatever war Wormen and the Aces were part of was most likely caused by the devil. Again, the game is set in the 1930s, so it's not at all out of the question for them to be all veterans of a fantasy cartoon World War I, especially with the different uniform bits and such that tie into the real World War I. The Inkwell Isles are seemingly disconnected and isolated from whatever else is out there, and we haven't really gotten any indication of an outside force attempting to invade. Furthermore, there aren't really any hints to big factions that could be at war with each other on the Isles. Or are there? Any of you viewers have a cool theory on all of this? Maybe there's something else to consider, maybe something I missed. Post it in the comment section. I have had some people complain that my videos aren't long enough or that I don't cover their favorite boss. The reality is some of these bosses don't really have much to talk about. I don't really see myself dedicating a whole video to Esther Winchester lore, when to be honest, there really isn't enough there to warrant a full-on discussion. At least that I could find. Cuphead will remain a core part of the channel as long as I find it enjoyable to talk about and have something actually worth discussing. But my main focus is on a variety of indie games, so keep your eyes peeled for discussions and lore on upcoming new games, and of course, be ready for when Silksong releases in a few 